interest myself and was really confused what I should do in university and anthropology was something that gave me a way to look at a lot of my different interests because it it has something for everybody and it just anthropologists study languages social cultural values and practices evolution of people it explores everything about humans. It challenges things that no other field does. It creates controversy. It preserves great and terrible moments of human history. It enlightens knowledge of ourselves and it makes for great storytelling. Being a branch of anthropology, archaeology does most of these things, but in historical or prehistoric contexts. My name is Yuri. I'm from Japan and studying cultural anthropology in Canada. I study anthropology because since I was a little kid, I have been fascinated by how cultures are described in films and novels. I want to write stories, and to be a good writer, it's important for me to understand what culture is in reality. So I decided to major in anthropology. Then I became interested in archaeology as I realized that any cultural group has its own history and a tradition that I have to know if I want to study today's culture. That's why I'm doing archaeology right now. So what do archaeologists actually do and how? Number one is research. Without this, field work would be more like treasure hunting than academic pursuit. And after that field work, we do more research in a lab working with artifacts found in the field. So then, what is actually done in the field, and how? Digging, obviously, so a shovel is needed to get through that initial sod layer in the ground. Also, an iconic archaeologist tool, the trowel, used for careful digging through each layer of soil. Buckets and dustpans are pretty essential for all the dirt moving. Screens are needed to carefully sift through the excavated dirt in order to find artifacts which are then bagged for later lab work. Record keeping is a large part of excavating and we strive for accuracy in those records, though we can get a little obsessive. Still, it is important, so things like measuring tapes, plumb bobs, transits, and cameras are essential. It may disappoint, but the typical archaeologist does not carry a whipper gun. Though fedora-like hats are highly possible. One last thing. We don't dig up dinosaurs. Vanessa, and uh, I'm heading into my final year at St. Mary's. Uh, in the anthropology program, and uh, this is, I'm not officially here uh, with this field school, but I have done uh, the Grand Prix field school uh, two years prior, and I'm back out just from pure interest and to help chronicle what's going on with the excavations. Uh. One of the things that I like about archaeology is the stories that are coming out of the ground as we work. We're looking at features, we're looking at ceramics and bits of bone and bits of glass, but what all of those things tell us are the stories about the people who lived in the houses and used the plates and dishes and what their lives were like and what we can learn from them. course finally allows students the chance to apply what they've learned about in class. 
digging trenches, finding artifacts, recording field notes, and doing lab work and research, it gives you a full view of archaeology. And this year, students were lucky enough to work at multiple Acadian sites. Well, one of the things I like about archaeology and about teaching archaeology is that it's a team-based activity. So you can't really do this work as a single, solitary person. So you, you have to go out as a group. You have to find ways of working together effectively. And uh, what I've found over the years is that the people who come into a program like this, generally they're the kind of people that you want to spend time with because they are um, not here for an easy grade. They're willing to work. Uh, they know that it takes dedication, and uh, let's face it, there are easier ways of getting a credit. So it's it's fun to work collaboratively. That's that's one thing. Here we are at Grand Prix National Historic Site. We are east of Herbin's Cross in the cemetery area and we're just about to begin our test excavations to detect the eastern boundary of the cemetery. Five by one meter test unit is plotted and we're about to begin. The other thing I'll say about archaeology that I've discovered is that um, I think there are very few cases in your life when you get to be at the very edge of human knowledge about something. And even though in some respects these are small stories, they're real stories about people's lives, and we are the first people to discover them and to put them together. And it's, it's a rare thing to be right at the, the forefront of understanding. And, uh, I think it's great, we're explorers and, and we're, we're doing that together. It, whatever you do, because everyone's pulling. Yeah. <laughs> Is it gonna be A or a C? We'll find out. <laughs> yeah. I just realized I was watching it through my phone and not real nice. life.
Jones. I'm a third year archaeology student at St. Mary's. When I was in grade nine and I was picking my courses for high school, I wanted to pick courses that would help me gear towards archaeology. But then I realized I'm very scared of spires and snakes. I thought, no, I'm not going to be an archaeologist because apparently with that mind frame, you only do archaeology in dangerous tropical situations. Anyways, fast forward to last year of university. I was living in England and I did a dig for two weeks in the medieval city. It was very fun. I was hooked on it. I came back home to Nova Scotia, switched to St. Mary's, and I've been doing archaeology ever since. As a kid, I always loved the history of Nova Scotia. I like natural history. I really like the environment. So working here at the Thibodeau site at Grand Pre, having that connection to the lowland, the upland, these places that the Acadians lived in, Mi'kmaq lived in, planters came, it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've got the whole oh, plate, God. I bet you. Oh my God. whole Look plate is there. Wow. We could glue it back together. Wow. 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 So great. So oh, oh no, is that lodged under the rock? There's more. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, but it, <laughs> if we it poke it around it, it, it might just be so good. Indiana Jones, the pyramids, the Colosseum, Machu Picchu, these are the kinds of things many people think of when they think of archaeology. But the reality is, archaeology happens all over the world. For many people, it could practically be in your backyard without you noticing it. It's unfortunate, but local archaeology simply isn't publicized in North America the way it is in many other places. The UK, for example, uses archaeology to their advantage, to showcase a rich history. The archaeology flaunts itself in the public eye, and people actually know what archaeology is. But Nova Scotia has some truly rich history of its own, the Acadians being a big part of that. You really don't need to look far from home to find archaeological significance. Everybody leaves stories behind, and a lot of those stories still need to be found and remembered. Any thoughts about what this thing was? It's very heavy on the kitchen function group, isn't it? Yeah, it was an old Starbucks. <laughs> an Acadian Starbucks to start it <laughs> A planter Starbucks. Yeah. Shawbucks. <laughs> that was Shawbucks. It was there. People were working here. Sat on the rocks there and ate lunch a whole bunch. <laughs> and broke ceramics. Yeah. They come here and... It was a Greek occupation. <laughs> He'd eat lunch here all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, it was. I can tell. <laughs>